William Douglas, first Earl of Douglas, 1323 to 1384. William Douglas was a Scottish nobleman and head of the Black Douglas family. Under his leadership, the family continued their climb to preeminence in Scottish politics that had begun under William's uncle, Sir James the Good, who was the trusted deputy of King Robert I of Scotland. This period also saw the family consolidate their military dominance over the south of Scotland. William Douglas was the son of Sir Archibald Douglas and Beatrice de Lindsay. William's father died at the Battle of Halidon Hill in 1333, and the young William became a ward of his kinsman and godfather, William Douglas, Knight of Liddesdale, who sent the boy to be educated in France. In 1332, following the Battle of Dublin Moor, Edward Balliol claimed the Scottish throne. He was part of a group known as the Disinherited. These were men whose Scottish lands and titles had been confiscated by Robert I following the Battle of Bannockburn. Despite support from England, Balliol's position was contested and by 1338 the Scots had regained control over virtually all of Scotland and the tide had turned against the usurper. Edward Balliol returned to Scotland after the defeat of King David II at the Battle of Neville's Cross in 1346 and raised an insurrection in a final attempt to gain the crown of Scotland. William Douglas returned to Scotland in 1348 and began waging a guerrilla war to drive the English out from his ancestral lands. In 1353, after leading a raid against Balliol, Douglas encountered the Knight of Liddesdale, hunting in what Douglas views as his domain, and promptly killed him. A more likely explanation for the killing was Liddesdale's treasonous agreement with the English to gain his own freedom from captivity. The next year, William of Douglas received a new charter from King David, bestowing him all the lands held by his uncle Sir James, his father Sir Archibald, and Liddesdale itself. Tensions on the Anglo-Scottish border led to a military build-up by both sides until a truce was agreed in 1355. Most of the English forces left for northern France to take part in the ongoing Hundred Years' War. A few days after agreeing the truce, the Scots, encouraged by the French, broke it they invaded Northumberland and captured the important English-held border town of Berwick-on-Tweed. The English were forced to redeploy their forces and in early 1356, an English army, commanded by King Edward III, began what was to become the last campaign in the Second War of Scottish Independence. The English reached Edinburgh and Edward intended to march on Perth but a winter storm drove the English fleet away and the English were forced to withdraw. Following Edward's retreat into England, Douglas arranged a truce with William de Boho, 1st Earl of Northampton. This gave Douglas the opportunity to cross to France with a large following and take arms against Edward the Black Prince. Douglas was present at the Battle of Poitiers where he was knighted by the French king. After the defeat there, Douglas escaped and returned to Scotland, where he was involved in peace negotiations with the English. A truce was established in 1357, and a permanent peace agreed. Douglas was part of the parliament that met at Berwick in 1357, which finalised the release of King David through the Treaty of Berwick. Douglas himself being one of the securities for his release. Douglas married Margaret of Mar in 1357. They had two children, James Douglas, Earl of Douglas, and Lady Isabel Douglas, Countess of Mar. The following year, Douglas was created Earl of Douglas. To reflect his newfound status, he built Tantalon Castle, which became the home of Douglas's sister-in-law and mistress 
Margaret Stuart, 4th Countess of Angus. In 1364, Douglas joined King David II in seeking a treaty with England that would have written off Scotland's debt to England in return for depriving his nephew, Robert the Stuart, of the succession. However, the plan never succeeded. The last years of Douglas's life were spent making and repelling border raids. He died at Douglas, South Lanarkshire, in 1384.